In this video, I'll show you how you could make $26,000 per month using PowerPoint. So, let's go! Okay, my dear friends, and first of all, let's talk about the traditional ways of making money with PowerPoint. And first of all, you could work as a PowerPoint designer or you could have your own slide design agency. And next, you could be creating PowerPoint templates and selling those templates on websites such as Graphic River or Envato Elements. And if you like teaching other people how to use PowerPoint, in that case, you could be creating PowerPoint courses and those courses can be online or you could provide life coaching as well. But in this video, let me show you one more awesome way that might help you earn $26,000 per month or more and that's super duper awesome. And this idea was inspired by one of my subscribers. So thank you very much and now let me show you how it works. And first of all, let's jump into YouTube where we can find this awesome channel called List Data. And this channel is creating videos with interesting statistics. And as you can see, the most popular videos have topics such as landmarks or shoe brands from different countries. So basically, they are providing interesting statistics from different countries. And now let's jump into viewstats.com and let's check how much this YouTube channel is making from YouTube ad revenue. And as we can see, the estimated revenue for the last 28 days goes up to $26,000, which is super duper awesome. As you can see as well, this channel is having a drop of 5k, but still the revenue goes up to $26,000. And in viewstats.com, you could find much more information, but for now, let's get back to YouTube and let's check out one of these videos. Let's see how hard it would be to create something like this in PowerPoint. And first of all, we have three columns of content flying in into the slide, and this could be easily created in PowerPoint. But next, as you can see, everything starts to scroll into the left side, and this way we're getting additional content that is coming from the right side. So it would be really interesting to see if we could make it happen in PowerPoint. And as you can see, the video is six minutes long, which means you'd have to prepare quite a lot of data, quite a lot of information. And that would definitely take some time, but the animation itself, I believe, is quite doable in PowerPoint. So let's jump back into PowerPoint and let me show you how you could create it as well. Okay, my dear friends, so let's start working on a fresh blank new slide. And now let's just pick a color that we will use as our slide background fill. That's looking nice. And by the way, I would like to use this slide as the introduction to our statistical video. So on this slide, let's insert a couple of text boxes and let's provide the topic of our video. And in this case, it's going to be luxury sports car brands. And as you can see, I'm using separate text boxes for each of the words. And this will allow us to animate all of these text boxes individually later on. So let me finish creating all of these text boxes and I'll catch you in a second. And now let's select all of the text boxes and let's add a flying animation to all of these four text boxes. And right now I'm choosing flying direction from left for all of the text boxes, but later on I'll select the sports and brands text boxes and for those two text boxes I'll use from right and this way we'll get a nice animation effect. And by the way, in the flying animation options I'm adding a bit of bounce end just to make all of these animations bouncy, just like that. And now let me select the sports and the brands text boxes and for these two guys let's choose direction from right. And this is what we get, that's super duper awesome. And now let's go the extra mile and let's add a little car icon and let's add the same bouncy flying animation to that little car. So let me do that and I'll catch you in a second. And now let's select the car text box and we can use the animation painter to copy and paste and the same bouncy animation to that little car. And in the animation pane, let's add one second animation delay to that little car so that it comes last. Okay, so let's check it out. Here are the text boxes and after that comes in that little car. And now if we wish, we can set the fade slide transition for this first slide and let's check it out on the full screen. That's easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And next, let's insert one more slide and let's make sure that it is using the same beautiful blue color for its background. That's nice. Okay, my friends, and now on this slide, we'll be creating those three columns of content. And for that, we'll be using a bunch of rectangles. Okay. And by the way, for this rectangle, I'm using a gray fill and a white outline.
And now let's align this rectangle to the top left corner of the slide. Let's stretch it so that it covers the whole height of the slide, just like that. Let's make two more copies so that we have three rectangles in total. And now we can select all of these three guys. Let's group them into a single group so that we could edit all of them at once. And now let's just stretch this group until it covers the whole slide. And now we can ungroup this group so that we could select all of the rectangles individually. That's nice. And next, let's copy one of these rectangles while holding down the control key. And let's make this guy smaller. So for the height, we could use two centimeters. Okay. And let's fill this guy with the same beautiful blue color. That's nice. And let's align it to the top left corner of the slide. And now we can double click inside of this rectangle and type in, for example, country. Okay. And by the way, for the font, I'm using Hansen and font size is 24. And next, let's duplicate this blue text box and let's position it in the middle of the first column. And let's type in anything that we wish, for example, car brand. And now let's select both of the blue text boxes and let's drag some copies into the rest of the columns. Okay, my friends, and now let's find some beautiful assets that we could use for our slide. And over here, I have already collected a couple of flags and some car logos. All of the links are in the video description if you'd like to check out those resources as well. And for now, let me copy the flag of Italy and let's paste it into our slide and let's position it at the top of the first column. And if we wish, we could crop the flag photo to a rounded rectangle shape and as well, we could add a white outline and a subtle shadow. So let me do that and I'll catch you in a second. Okay, that's looking good and now let me find that Ferrari logo. Let's paste it over here and let's add a subtle shadow to this logo as well. And next, let's update the text boxes and let's fill the rest of the columns with some content. Okay, my friends, so the first slide is ready and now let's make sure that we select and group each of these columns of content into separate groups. This way we'll be able to add animations to all of them separately. So let's make sure that all of these columns are selected and let's add a flying animation to all of these guys. And for the animation duration, I'm using 3 seconds and in the animation options, I'm going for the maximum smooth end. And for the last two animations, let's set them to start after previous and this way they will play one after the other. And let's use the fade slide transition for the second slide. And now let's check out what we have created so far from the first slide. So this is our introduction slide where we can see the topic of our video. That's nice. And after that, we transition into the next slide where we get these beautiful flying columns. That's nice. And after that, we'll have to find a way how to introduce some additional columns and how to make that scrolling effect. So let me show you how we can make that happen next. So now, my dear friends, let's duplicate this slide that we have already created. And on the duplicate slide, let's remove all of the animations and let's set the slide transition to none. OK, so let's make sure the slide transition is set to none. On the second slide, the transition was set to fade, but for the last slide, it has to be set to none. OK, and now let's make sure that on the second slide, the checkbox after zero seconds is checked which means that after all of the animations on the second slide will finish playing, we will automatically transition into the next slide. And this is what we need. And next, on the last slide, let's make sure that we select everything and let's group everything into one huge single group, just like that. And now my friends will have to attach additional slides to the right side of this slide. And for that, I have already prepared a couple of sample slides that we could use, for example, this one. So you can see everything is grouped into a single group. That's nice. So let's copy that group and let's paste it into our last slide. And let's attach this new group to the right side of the first slide. And let's copy this sample slide as well. And once again, let's go to our last slide and let's attach this new slide to the right edge of the rest of the slides, just like that. So basically right now we have three slides on a single slide. 
And next, let's select all of these three slides and let's group them into one super huge group. And this way we can move around all of these uh, slides at once, that's nice. And by the way, that blue rectangle below is the actual slide area. So what's inside of that slide area is going to be visible during the slideshow. So now let's make sure that this huge group of slides is positioned correctly inside of the slide area. And since we want to see the first slide first, let's make sure that it is visible in the slide area. And for now, let's actually move this group of slides just above the slide window. This way it will be easier to work with the motion path animation. And for the motion path animation direction, let's choose left. And now let's drag that red bubble until the last slide is visible in the slide area. And now of course let's make sure that we bring down all of these slides to the same level where the slide window is. Okay, next let's make sure that this motion path animation plays quite slow, so for the animation duration we can use 25 seconds. And let's make sure that this animation starts with previous. And in the animation pane we can add one second of smooth start and smooth end, just to have that smooth touch to this motion path animation. And once again, let's make sure that on the second slide, this checkbox after 0 seconds is activated, which means that the second slide will transition automatically to the last slide, where we have this motion path animation that lasts 25 seconds and should scroll all of our beautiful slides to the left side. So let's check it out from the second slide, and first of all, we should see those flying animations. Here they are, that's looking beautiful. And now we should instantly transition into the next slide, nothing should change, but that uh, motion path animation should activate, and now all of these slides should be scrolling to the left side until we see the last slide, okay? And then the motion path animation should smoothly stop because we have added that one second smooth end. And by the way, if any of these PowerPoint animations seem a bit too complex and you would like to master PowerPoint animations, then I would definitely recommend checking out the PowerPoint Animation Mastery on pptskill.com. Okay, my dear friends, so everything seems to be working as expected. And now if you'd like to export these slides as a video, make sure that you delete all of the slides that you don't need. Just keep those slides that you need and go to export, choose create video, choose a resolution that you wish. And for the time spent on each slide, I would leave 0 seconds. PowerPoint will calculate automatically how much time it needs to spend on each slide. And skadoosh, this way you'll have a beautiful video and then you can put some background music on top of it. And then you can upload that video to YouTube and potentially make thousands of dollars per month with these kind of videos. And of course, a single video is not enough, you would have to create hundreds of these videos. And as well, you would have to research the most interesting topics and gather all of the information, but now you know how you could create this kind of animated video just using PowerPoint. I wish you all of the best, and I'll see you on the next one.